And she's going to talk about um, the science of uh, brain resilience during this time. During this time, we definitely need, it's a lot going on, right? It's a lot with our mental going on. And how can we stay observant and focus our brain in the time of the crises that are going on? Train our brain towards positive thinking and create rather than react with fear and worry. So please welcome Miss Marlena with four total success. <laughs> woo, woo. Okay, so I'm gonna make you a host. Yeah, I can share the screen. Let me go to participants. And make you a host. All right. So in the meantime, as we do all this, um, Latoya, let me do a time check because you say it was 30 minutes, but I know it's 8.05 Central. Uh, do I still have the 30 minutes? So you want me to? That's fine. Like, if anyone has to go um, at 9 o'clock, that's, that's completely fine. I do see us being like 9.20 max. That can make okay. everything else go faster. But just FYI. All right, so let me share my screen and then start a presentation. Let me know when everybody can see the screen. I can see it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go from the beginning. Okay, you guys can see that? Hey, give, can you all give her a thumbs up if you can see it? Okay, good. All right, so again, my name is Marilena, but you can say Marilena, Mary. You can actually nickname me if this is too difficult. So um, so thank you for being here, being patient. Uh, I know you guys uh, have been doing this for a while. This is my first time to interact, so I appreciate the opportunity, Latoya, to be with you guys. Okay. So um, this topic is actually something that I do in an hour, so I'm just gonna brief it for you guys. And if I go too fast, um, I will always uh, be available after these um, 20, 25 minutes that we have together to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so uh, as you probably have experienced, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this term, but VUCA, have, have anyone seen this term before? No? If you have anyone in the military, um, you have probably been familiar with this because in the military, this is where this term started. And it stands for volatile, uncertain, chaotic, complex, ambiguous times. Uh, and this has been used by the military since after World War II, um, in which they're trying to describe what kind of situations when they go into war, what kind of situations and the ready situation based uh, on this vocabulary. And not to be military people, but I think we can all agree we're in VUCA times right now. Do you feel that you, your family, or your business are volatile? Give me a yes or a no, or just on your screen, yes or no. Volatile, uncertain, chaotic, complex, or ambiguous. So this, when we are in situations like this, you know, we're obviously in multiple big uncertainties, such as Obviously, what we all have experienced, the global pandemic, COVID-19, we don't know where it came from. We're still wondering, you know, who created this, if it was man created or not. It doesn't matter. Did, did somebody want to say something? Oh, yeah. Okay. There's somebody that has the, um, um, they're muting themselves. Yeah. Okay. Can you mute on your end? Just mute everyone. But everyone, please mute yourself. And I'm also going to post in here really quickly to switch to the speaker view so you can see the presentation larger. Thanks, Stacy. Great. Uh, you're probably another one or your uncertainty is how do I protect myself in the ones that I love, you know, from this? There's even confusing information about how to do this. The health of your friends, you know, checking on them, your coworkers, your community, your customers. Uh, the health of the whole planet, you know, statistically speaking, 80% of the planet is going to get this virus. There's no escape to it. Now, how do we keep ourselves healthy in the middle of all this? Because just like the flu, some cases can be severe or some cases can be fatal, unfortunately, like the ones 
we have experienced uh, with, with some people in the U.S. and across the world. You know, we're all um, looking at our finances. Um, you know, how do we handle what we have? Do we have any savings? Do I need to re-budget uh, myself at home as well as in my business? How do I do that? Where do I go for that? Or applying for PPPs or unemployment or whatever it might be for any of us. Your loved one's finances, it's not just you, it's everyone around you. You might have some dependent um, kids, uh, parents, grandparents, uh, ankles, aunts. You know, I don't know, whoever we're trying to support, we're all in this together. And we need to start thinking more than just me, but also how everything is affecting um, everybody's business as well as their personal life. And yet, even more, um, the wider economic activity. You know, what is op being open out there? How are they opening their business? What are they doing? What can I learn from others that are opening businesses just like mine? And how can we, um, you know, build some synergies? And generally, what's going to happen? You know, all of this has taken us to a, such a level of emotional state that sometimes we can't control it. If not, look around you, what's happening on the news. All of a sudden it was COVID-19. Now it's, it's all this thing that, that is happening um, with, with the death of, of this uh, wonderful man uh, in Minneapolis. So what else is gonna happen to, to us after all these uncertainties? And uncertainties, to be honest, these are major ones that are hitting us right now, but they are uncertainties every day in our lives. So the trick is, where are we mentally? How do we react? you know, to these uncertainties that are present in our lives. So for some of us, and I'm sure uh, for most of us it happened, when we first started hearing of this COVID-19 in Wuhan and then in Italy and, and then in Spain and then, you know, certainly in Seattle, it was a shock, wasn't it? We're in complete shock. We're going, what, what are they talking about? For some of us, it was very, very painful, either because either we were affected by you personally, some of you might have or not have it, or know someone that, that did. Hopefully, you know, no one that you know have died, but for some of you, you might know somebody whose loved ones have died in, in, in horrible ways because they couldn't be with the person that they love in the hospital. And then, you know, some people are just coming out of it not only physically, but also mentally. You know, what are the things that we can do so that we get out of the shock, out of the pain or the victim mode, and start rehab, uh, rehabbing ourselves in a good way or our businesses or the people around us. So the one thing that is certain that they have taught us or reminded us of is that control doesn't exist. Not now, not never. Uncertainty is the way of the game. And the most successful business people that I know are the ones that don't want to control things. But rather, they want to work around them with what I call the three, three seats. Whatever happens, whatever uncertainty, first, we have to have compassion for one another and it started with you. You know, how is this affecting me? Right, but not in the victim way, but in a compassionate way. Recognize this is having an effect on me and not play being, you know, superwoman or superman, you know, trying to do it all the same way it was because it's impossible. So have a little compassion for yourself and acknowledge this is happening to you and that it's affecting you. The second big one, C, is courage. Courage comes, the word courage comes from the word, the word cook, which is heart in French. And so, yes, having the heart, having the courage to move on from just being in that space, recognize that it's a fan, it's affecting me, and moving to the next thing, it requires a lot of courage. If not, look at the many examples that you might be seeing in your families, in your communities, in, you know, like I've seen it you know, in churches, I've seen it in uh, nonprofit organizations, food banks, you know, even restaurants that are about to do the break point of disappearing, they're still having the courage to help one another. Which takes me to the third C, which is the community. You know, when we are in these stages, we cannot do it alone. We need a community. And I was so glad when Latoya told me to join you guys, because this is part of what we need to do. 
is be there for one another so that we, instead of trying to control, we reach out to one another and we build in each other's strength and who is doing better than me and who can help me if that is the case. The truth is that in our minds, and this comes from several studies in neuroscience, um, and not to get too complicated because there'll be a whole, you know, uh, three-day webinar, but uh, just to make it simple for you guys, there's three mechanisms of how the mind works under crisis, and which you will be familiar. The first level is what I call the broader environment. And it's kind of, you know, this little animal, I don't know the name of it. Um, does anybody know the name of this animal? Barrett. Barrett, okay. So it's like that, you, you, like, your, your ears pick up. You know that there is a threat out there, but you know what? It's probably far away. It's probably when we started hearing, there was, oh my God, this horrible situation in Wuhan. Oh my God, now it's in Italy. <gasps> now it's in Spain. And maybe you, sa you have friends or you have traveled to that part of the world. And you said, oh wow, it's happening close to where my friend lives. Then it was Seattle. Then it was New York. Then it was Detroit. And then it's getting closer and closer to us, right? So when we are level one, we're just hearing the news. It's happening somewhere else. And in that stage, what our mind does, okay, we are focusing on that, but not too much. We hear every now and then, and we know there's something going on, but it's still, if that is affecting someone in another part of the world, let's say, or in another state, um, we hear about it, we talk about it, but we can still do our life as usual. So we know there's a threat, but it's not a danger to us. Level two, our brain is what we call what the tiger is in your neighborhood, and you hear that noise. Now we're hearing, oh, I live in Florida, so, oh my God, now it's in Miami, right? Miami Day. Miami Day is 190 miles from where I live. Oh, now it's there. But guess what? I have friends. I have family that live in Miami, so now it's in my neighborhood. Now it's very, very close to me. So depending on how close the event or the crisis might be to you, uh, either physically or affect you mentally or your business, you put less or more attention. The truth is that when people are in level two, uh, which is what most of us have been, um, your reaction is alarm. Your alarm system goes off in your brain. We have something a little um, um, for our brain. It's called the limbic system. It is where the amygdala is and it's in the back of your brain, and it's the one that sets all the fire alarms for you to protect yourself because it's too close. It's becoming dangerous to your survival. It's becoming dangerous for you to act the way it is, and guess what it does for businesses? Business owners like all of us are. Paralyzes us. We start acting the way we were, and actually, we're trying, we, we, we react with anxiety. We react, we make mistakes. Yeah, even if we want to do it right, we can't because our mind is in anxiety mode, is in this cortisol levels are at all time high. For some people, the closer it is, it's in your neighborhood, but it might be in your next door uh, house, in your neighbor's house, not in the neighborhood, but in your neighbor's house. Now you hear about somebody that worked with you that got sick. Um, now it's getting so close to home that we're actually trying to prepare so it doesn't attack us. And it's a time in which you cannot create. Your mind will not be creative at all. Your mind will make several mistakes. I don't know if this is happening to you, but as the news, the unfortunate news that everybody starts watching every day and they were getting worse and worse and people are watching it more and more, what happens is your brain goes to alert mode. And that's all we can think about and talk about. Right? And if your mind stays at that level for a long time, it's impossible to ask people to carry on even daily tasks. Let me give you an example. I, in my role, I am an executive coach and leadership consultant, and I work with thousands of people from around the world. And I saw it. You know, the people in Europe, my clients in Europe started shutting down. And even though they were working from home, and they could reach out to me because I could be of help they were paralyzed. They were not even doing Skype or Zoom. They were just so consumed 
by protecting themselves and staying home, they didn't even want to talk about it because they were in survival mode, trying to get, you know, food, uh, masks, whatever it was for them. In the meantime, my clients in, in South America, they thought it was level one, like, like this, right? So, oh, it's over there, it's so far away from me. They were trying to do business as usual and they then proactively take action. So my clients that were in level one and your clients that might be um, in level one if they were able to keep themselves that way, they were extremely productive. A great example, what I can tell you of level one people that were able to prepare and do this in an extraordinary way um, was the people from SpaceX and NASA, which recently launched the, the shuttle. They were able, because of all the previous planning and all the testing and all the crisis managers and contingency plans that they have, that this, they had to do very, very little modification to the plan. Now, I know very, very few companies that have been able to stay in level one, and most of them are either here or the majority of them, at least in the U.S., the 36 million people that are unemployed, some of them are here in level three. The tiger is here. It's just roaring here every day. You're so consumed because you just don't know how to make the right decisions. By the way, in this stage, the mind is so blocked that your system, is impossible to focus, impossible to concentrate. You make horrible decisions. You even talk back to your customers. You are not, you're degrading to the thinking like you will not believe. Uh, there's biases that are coming out. There's panic, there's damage to yourself and to others. So much so that I have heard in the news and by the Hel uh, World Health Organization that the level of stresses have taken people even to make a lot of abuses in their family groups. People hitting each other, abusing kids, abusing the elderly. So this is a stage three other max. What is happening out there right now that you're seeing in the news and the protests, people are in level three. And it's not just because of the pandemic, it's a result of the mind being so overwhelmed with so many crises and not knowing how to get out of it, and they're real. It's, it's not that the tiger's not there, it's there. That the minimal drop that you, something that happens is gonna exacerbate any reactions because we cannot be rational. We're in that stage in which Everything is going to be exacerbated. Everything is survival mode, mode, and we don't want to talk, and we just want to react. So what's the way out of this? So one of the models that I'm going to present to you today is called the SCARF model. And I'm presenting this to you in a beautiful SCARF uh, because this is, it is a model that the hope of the model was created in 2008 by a neuroscience called David Rock is to easily activate threat responses rather than reaction. So let me explain. Human beings were intelligent beings. So we have the capacity to do both. React, which is a survival. It's like somebody pinches you, you react. It's like the animalistic part of us. Or we can choose to respond, which takes the stimulus to come into my brain and the ability to think about what is the best answer or response that I can give to this event. And that's what human beings were capable of doing if we choose to, instead of just reacting. And that's at any age, that's in any part of the world, that's uh, you know, people that are not mentally ill, they're able to access what we call this SCARF model, which is not, nothing but a model to collaborate with and influence others when we are in this kind of situations. So this is what the SCARF stands for. And I'm not, not gonna go through each one of those because it's, it's a little bit too much, but I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit about um, autonomy and rela relationship, those two, okay? So one of the things that we know as business owners and you guys entrepreneurs know that this uh, pandemic has cost to us uh, cost to us and cost us is the uncertainty and our autonomy to do things the way we used to do it. It has reduced them and what happens is 
uh, we have never experienced like this before. We don't know how to act. This is all new to us. Uh, we're not sure what to do for yourself, for others, for your finances, for your company. It, it's a complete uh, reboot, as you say, in, in the computer business, right? We have to reboot the computer again or the phone again because it's just so new to us that we don't know. We don't know where to start. We know, how, we know how that it's affecting us and we have to do something, but we're not sure what that is. And by the way, sometimes we fail to go to family and friends that are giving us conflicting advice. And so we're all over the place. Our mind is like, oh, what did I do, you know? And so to be honest, you know, and it has happened to me and it has happened to the best of us uh, because we're not immune to this. What we have to do is to relinquish that control and try to reduce our anxiety levels and our desire to control and what they call the old normal and just start thinking about what can I do under the person in circumstances with a lot of courage, a lot of compassion, and surrounding ourselves with the best advisors possible. Which sometimes they're in our network, sometimes they're not. And so some of you I heard you say that during this time you're networking more, absolutely. There are people out there willing to help you, free of charge, and with absolutely the best advice in the world. And we need to reach out for those sources because we might not have it in our network. People that are inspiring to us. To top it off, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I miss the hugs. I miss being around the people that I love and hugging my 85 year old father, my two month old nephew that I can't even see because he's in Houston, I cannot travel anymore. So this is a time where we're in that kind of mental stage that we need more of that. And so there's a dramatic increase in any social connections, not just with your family, but with your coworkers. Um, the social support that you crave so much it has diminished to a level that for some people is just it's driving them mad. Um, so what is worse, the elderly population, the kids, they need more of that physical support. They are the ones that sometimes they don't express it very well, but they're being hit by all this reduction in relatedness um, that, that we talk about. So what can we do? So we need to look for, okay, plan A is the one you had, it didn't work, and maybe you even have a plan B, but that doesn't work either. What is my plan C? And I'll tell you what, the plan C that some of you have put in place um, is something completely new. It's probably something that you never thought about, or maybe something you thought about, but you never implemented. Because what is beautiful about Plan C is that it's showing each one of us that we're more than the crisis. So your talents, some of them are absolutely needed out there, and we need to express them to others so that they can take, quote unquote, advantage of what, we, what our offering is because we have so much to give. And I'm not only looking at products, I'm also looking at yourself, right? In the equation of producing those products. For example, um, uh, I think it was, I forget her name, I'm gonna look in the list here, the one of you ladies that I, that I talked uh, with. Uh, the lady that has the uh, t-shirts, or the lady that has uh, the sassy essence, Right, so what, what can uh, Bridget, that you can do in your plan C to take advantage of the opportunity of being remotely from your clients, but yet, wow, wouldn't it be nice that somebody who is a friend of a friend gives one of your sassy essence and just send them on the mail as I'm thinking of you? There's still a market, you know, for your products. There's this little ways to reinvent your marketing uh, approach. There's little ways for you to attract clients in a different way from that place, that place of compassion and that place of wanting to contribute and collaborate with one another rather than do the hard sell. So that's one of the ways for you guys to stay in business. Recognize that your products are more than that. Stephanie, for example, from Primerica was telling us in the little, in the group also about how she was able to 
guy clients in this crisis. They're asking her about, you know, their finances and so on and so forth, and she's able to help them. So what do we need to do? We need to filter the information that we have. We need to refocus. We need to um, be assertive about what it is is that we truly love and what, we're, what our talent is and what we can give to the world. We need to be select, very, very selective to the people that you'll be in conversations with because you don't have the bandwidth. Your mind doesn't, I mean, there's a sky, there's all these other things, but you know what? Here we are at the end hours of the day and you guys are tired. Maybe you have been on the phone all day or you know, on a Skype or Zoom calls. Your mind is tired. So be selective with whom do you want to have the conversations that could produce the effects that you want. And lastly, be creative. Let others tell you about what do they want from you or from your business or your products. So bottom line, caring about others and also use any preventive strategies that will give uh, that will allow you to recharge yourself so that you can keep caring about yourself, your others, and your business. So some buffers, you know, build a schedule and stick to it. Forget about people. Somebody was telling me, um, it was the lady uh, in, um, uh, one of the ladies in Savannah that was telling me about uh, her wedding uh, business. Well, guess what? If there's no wedding, what are you going to do? If you, there's no wedding here, what are you going to do about it? How, what other services are you going to offer? Um, so just do little by little, even week by week planning will work better for you because your mind see the completion of that plan instead of having the six month plan that it will probably not be completed and then you'll be frustrated. Connect with the people that you love. I cannot emphasize this enough, guys. I mean, we have the phones, we have the cell phone, we have the text, and yet we're spending our time in conversations sometimes with other people and forgetting the ones that you love. And what I'm saying connect is also the physical aspect of it. If you have them next to you, your daughter, your dog, your cat, your grandma, your spouse, anything or anyone, you need to connect with them with love. It's not just a little bit because I have time for you now, is truly connect with them in a way that it's going to be so powerful that you're going to miss having those kind of connections once we go back to what we say uh, is the new normal. Express your emotions. You have the right. You have the right to be upset. You have the right to be tired. You have the right to be anxious. Label them because it's happening to you too. Don't stay in the place of labeling and be blah, 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 it's happening to me, but and don't drink too much wine either, but for sure, acknowledge that you're going through those emotions. Make a list of the little things that you can control. Maybe you can control, um, I don't know, the time that you wake up and go to bed. Maybe control the times in which um, you're gonna work during the day and not the whole day like you probably used to. Work out how to help others during uh, this time that you have allocated for other people. Regulate the media intake, please, please. I beg you, do not watch the news or read the news most of once per day, no more than an hour. It's an imperative for our mental health and our focus in our business and ourselves. It's too much out there and too contradictory uh, of and images and things that are just bombarding our mind left and right. Do a 15 minutes daily or group check-in since you have a group like we're doing today. Uh, stretch often. Do deep breathing. Breathing is the wonderful tool that our body has and craves for, and we don't do it enough. So take that deep breath every time that you feel all the things coming at you. That's like the ultimate tool to refresh yourself, and we forget uh, to use it. We go, go, go like the little uh, arrow ready rabbit. Exercise if you can. It doesn't have to be strenuous exercise, but just taking a walk, uh, just a stretching, you know, in a mat at home, uh, just going and visiting a friend and now with social distance, you can walk with your neighbor and be six feet apart and walk for a mile or two. Um, you know, just little things, whatever it is, just play with your kids, video games if you're up to it. But anything that will allow your mind to relax and think about something else that is not what worries you. 
So I would like for you to write on your chat, how are you guys doing? Uh, what are you doing to manage your current uh, stress levels? Anyone want to write in the chat or just open your uh, mics if that's easier? Okay, talking, walks on the, taking walks on the walk uh, on the trail, stay connected with friends, works, yes. Cocktails, yeah, not too many, but yes, they work. Silence, look for those times of silence. Beautiful, okay, yeah, this, this, this is awesome. Limiting social media, oh yeah. Read, read about something that relaxes you. Read a novel, read some, about something very beautiful. Spending time with family, clean up, yeah. Uh, meditate, doing yoga in the morning is wonderful. Walk your dog, uh, listening to something that inspires you, absolutely, positive messages. Just, just sometimes even looking at yourself in the mirror and, and just tell yourself how great you are, right? This is you, you're here and you're here to stay. Just dance, listen to music and dance. You know, moving your body does wonderful things for you as well. Yep, give thanks for the blessings. What are the many other things that you have that half of the planet do not have? Yep, also look for help. You can talk to your therapist, absolutely. Yep, Facebook and IG posts, as long as they're not uh, related to, to the news, that's awesome. Excellent, thank you guys, thank you. Yeah, there's many ways and we, yeah, we can talk it out with a friend and let it go and you know, don't let it come back to you and let, don't let it affect you. Wonderful, thank you for your participation. We're almost at the end of it. So the fastest way to shift, so instead of thinking I'm not good at this, I don't think I can do it, this is not easy for me, just add this word, yet. Okay, you might be in this station with, you don't think there's an outcome. Oh my God, it will always be like this. How am I going to get out of this? Yet, always positive thinking. Okay, you know you can and you will. And our times are different for each of us. So some of the resources, I'm going to list them. You guys have some wonderful resources, but I'm just going to list some of this here. If you guys want to read more about uh, neuroscience, the brain at work, uh, or watch videos of David Rock, about it. Uh, there's some apps out there that are incredible. I particularly love Calm. That's my go-to app, especially at night when my brain might be wrestling. Reading exercises that are guided by Reginald Ray. Uh, there's a lot of mindfulness programs out there. This is one it's a virtual program that I recommend. Um, or just read other articles of people that have experienced this in other uh, parts of the world or even in in recent history. Sometimes that give us a, a wonderful perspective about it. Um, or read certain blocks. This is one that a friend of mine wrote, uh, Coping in Challenging Times. So with that, we are at the end of the presentation. Uh, I know I went a little bit too fast uh, and I'm open for any comments or questions that you guys might have. Any questions, ladies? Feel free to unmute yourself. I have a question. What do you suggest are healthy ways to speak to your children about what's going on um, so that you don't cause a panic or a uproar? Yeah, children are experiencing the same levels of anxiety because you know, they hear the news and they don't know the, they don't know about finances. They don't know about <laughs> what you might be experiencing, but just, just put it to their level. For example, just use it um, like the school. You know, is the school gonna come back? Is summer camp gonna come back? Thanks. You just provide us with factual information that you have. And again, this is not the end of the world. This too shall pass is the message. Acknowledge it's a reality, but again, the jet is an important part. Kids are more resilient than we know way way more they're more intelligent they actually will give us the answer they're actually the most compassionate beings that i know are children okay 
So they'll Thank get you. There is a wonderful, Tiana, there's a wonderful show of um, Sesame Street. You might want to look it up on uh, YouTube that was recently uh, done. And it's exactly that. It was uh, uh, directed towards children by the okay. Sesame Street characters about the pandemic. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> we're going to have somebody else in the chat. Let me just access. Can you put out the resources? Of course, let me go back and you guys can take a picture. I did do a screenshot. I could share in the group too. Yeah. Here we go. Um, can you tell me what the R and the F stood for in scarf? The R was for, let me just put it out for you. So you guys want to take a picture of that too. Oh, what is it? My wonderful scarf. Taking okay, here we go. So it's relationships, it's relatedness, and the F is fairness. Thank and again, you. You can uh, Google or Bing the scarf model, and it will give you, you know, more information on what the other um, uh, the, the other distinctions are here. I just didn't want to go a lot into it because we don't have the time. Can you provide your email address? Sure, I'm gonna write it in the chat. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'll go to the chat. And please reach out. Okay. Also gonna give you my cell phone. Oh wait, you sent it to just me. Oh, sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone. This is my cell phone number and this is my email. And you said you're based in Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah, don't call me. You're in Miami? It's near Miami, it's in Palm Beach Gardens. Yeah. Would you like to trade? Oh my God, I love Palm Beach. Would you like to trade spaces, maybe? <laughs> like, I can go there, you can come here. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else do you have to offer with that? Some bottles of wine? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love Miami <laughs> and Palm Beach. It's a fun, it's a fun town and town, and that's great for your mental. That like your location. Yeah, I mean, is perfect they for opened, your yeah, they opened the beaches here two weeks ago, and mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I went to the beach like I've never, you know, I never realized what that does to my mind and my body was so yeah, been an hour out there. Yeah, you're in West Palm. Palm Beach Gardens, which is 15 minutes north of West. I mean, between West Palm and Jupiter. But when I said I'm close to Jupiter, people think I'm kidding them. <laughs> like it's a planet. <laughs> no, it's not right. the town or Jupiter, Florida. Wow. My, my father graduated from JFK. Yeah. It's in West Palm, though. Yeah. That's yeah. about 20 minutes in Lake Worth. Very, very close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great high school. Yeah. Well, any other questions, ladies? Don't be shy. Um, hey, it's Stephanie. I do have a question. Sure. Um, so how do you, or what's the best way to um, deal with people that aren't okay? So like if you're going about your day and you're pretty good because you're doing what you do, but then you encounter somebody who's not, I get it, and I, I hear them out, and I, I I totally get it. But, like, what's the best way to protect your own energy while at the same time being compassionate? You can be compassionate, but you also need to put your boundaries. Definitely. Uh, there's so much. You know, if the uh, conversation that they have with you is it, a loop conversation, it's just repeating, and they cannot do something for themselves, you can suggest that they go for professional help. You know, and professional help doesn't look like, you know, they need to pay for services. There's a lot of support groups out there. Actually, they're free. Actually, in COVID-19, that, that page, the government has a lot of support groups that people can go and join groups and be in the conversation so they can get on our perspective. Because they're loading it down on you, and, and there's so much, 
that you can take, or maybe you don't right. feel too capable of helping them. Maybe you're too close to it or, or to them. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Great question. Anyone else? No, that was helpful. I hope it was helpful for you guys. And again, it's different than usually what you probably guys are used to in this group. I don't know, but um, happy to be here and happy to be here. Can I ask one other question? Please. So I have been in business for 20 years and I've been um, a self improvement and growing and working and like all like all the good things. But like recently within the last maybe two years, I've become more interested in the brain and how the brain works and all this neuroscience stuff. How do you like, what's the best way to, to like enter into learning more about this? Do you know what I mean? Like what's a good resource, like a beginner's guide to like neuroscience? Sure. So you don't have to become a neuroscientist. That's a good news. Um, there's actually some free webinars that the neuroscience Leadership Institute, I can send you a link, Stephanie, that they are giving. They're free. And it's like every two weeks they have a new topic. Yeah, it's super interesting. I would appreciate but, it. That's awesome. And, and they, you know, David Rock, I love him because even though he's a scientist and a studio for this, he's a cool guy. You know, he's just not, you know, this brainiac that talks in a language that we don't understand. Um, and even if we don't, you ask him a question in the chat and he answers you. So, yeah, that could be a great resource. And there's a lot of YouTube videos of him and others talking about neuroscience. So you just do that on YouTube. It could be, you know, 20, 30 minutes video so you can um, learn a little bit more about it. Yeah, awesome. Because I think sometimes we um, treat or try to treat like the, the symptoms and we're not getting to the root of different issues. And if you could find a way to help people and work with people and not just be so like problem solving, but get to the root of it, I think it's more helpful, more impactful. Yeah, and when you're a scientist, it's not, it's, you're a scientist, they are not trying to treat anything. Right, to treat right. Anything. You understand it, right? And if you have science, and just with neuroscience, it's a tool for you to understand the needs of your client and how do you respond to them in a way that they will appreciate and that will get them hooked into it. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you, ladies, for your questions. And thank you, Marilena, for a wonderful presentation, a helpful presentation. So, you're welcome.